Hello, welcome to Coffee Break with Microchip Technology. Coffee Break is our ongoing forum in which we discuss new and evolving technology, all in about the amount of time it takes to drink a cup of coffee. I'm your host, Eric Glatfelter. Let's say hello to Aliyah Fahoot, our moderator. Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today. We are currently live on YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn, and you can participate in today's episode by leaving your questions and comments in the chat, or you can email us at livestream at microchip.com after the podcast. Don't forget to follow, like, and subscribe to our social media platforms. Back to you, Eric. Thanks, Aaliyah. All right, on to our topic, which is high fidelity sensing with Delta Sigma ADCs. Joining us today is Mark Smith, a product marketing manager here at Microchip. Mark, welcome to Coffee Break. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, so let's, let's get started. Okay, a little sure. bit of uh, background here. So when we talk about ADCs, there are two main types, SARS and Delta Sigmas. So what is the sweet spot for each? And if you're a design engineer, why would you choose one over the other? That's right, I, that, good question. Of course, yeah, at Microchip, we have these two different types of main types of analog to digital converters. And it really comes down to what's the frequency of your signal that you're trying to measure. Mm -hmm. And if you're at 15 kilohertz or below, then you want to focus on, more than likely, you want to focus on delta sigma ADCs. Okay. If you're a 15 kilohertz or above, then the successful approximation register or SAR ADCs are, is where you really want to go for those two options. Now, okay. for high fidelity type measurements, now you also need to take into account um, sampling rate is important, and that kind of comes into why we picked 15 kilohertz. For our delta sigma ADCs, the sampling rate is at 150 kilohertz, which is 10 times higher than 15 kilohertz. Okay. And then for our SAR ADCs, we have sampling rates all the way up to a, a one megahertz, and so, it, so those work well for signals, for high fidelity signals, all the way up to 100 kilohertz or more. Okay. Now, you mentioned, uh, you used the phrase high fidelity. Yeah. So I think about the, uh, the box that my audio amp came in, and That's it's a marketing right. term on there. But what does that really mean in, in this type of application? Yeah, it, it really comes down to that you want the true signals. You want true signals. And so there's a couple different ways that we detect true signals in the solution. One, we look at, you know, when, you, when you're measuring a signal, we're taking it from the analog domain and we're bringing it into the digital domain. We want to make sure that we're getting that true signal. And, and we, first we look at distortion and noise. Mm -hmm. And we want to make sure that the distortion on that, the signal that we're acquiring is as low as possible. And so, there, so we, if you're bringing in a 50, 50 hertz signal or a one kilohertz signal, we want to make sure that the harmonics of that are as low as possible. And our delta sigma modulators have awesome THD, okay. we, meaning that their total harmonic distortion, the stuff that, that's added that's not, shouldn't be there, is minus 116 dB below the main signal. So more than almost 100,000 times less. Okay. okay. And the other area is, is noise. Um, we also want to make sure that our noise is, is not good. Or spurious frequency components that might come in depending, that may be just kind of, that could come in because of the delta sigma uh, ADC architecture. Um, and, and our, what we call our, and so we have this other term called spurious free dynamic range, and it's really a signal, it's very similar to signal to noise, and that is as high as 120 dB. It's really great performance. And the way we do this is that <coughs> with our Delta Sigma ADCs, is we have a patented technology um, that allows us to use a type of multi-level feedback in our Delta Sigma modulators that gives us really good spurious free dynamic range, but also gives us great distortion numbers, or really low distortion numbers with this patented Delta Sigma modulator, okay. Delta Sigma converter uh, typology. Okay, so um, we, can, we can see the performance on, on the screen there. If you're, if you're using uh, a technology that, that has higher harmonics or more noise, what's the impact on the end system there? Yeah, and, and so you know, if you're doing power monitoring meter, metering solutions and you're looking at harmonics, you want to make sure that those harmonics are not caused by your ADC, you know, mm -hmm. that they're true, because you need to make corrections of that if you're, if you're monitoring power. Um, for medical equipments, you really want this to be 
really, you know, really well, good. It's the true signal. Sure. Case in point, a couple years ago, I was I was doing an EKG measurement in the doctor's office. You know, an EKG is a, a way of measuring the electrical pulses around the heart. Well, they hooked it up to my, my myself, the EKG, and and they they were looking at the waveform, and there was a little extra extra wiggle in that waveform, and mm -hmm. The, automatic, the artificial intelligence that was used to, to decipher that signal said, this, there's some problems here. And so we actually ended up doing additional tests. It turned out the tests were fine, everything was okay, and we went back and the doctor and I looked at that EKG and go, this EKG is wrong, it's erroneous here. And so, you know, whether that was the ADC or not, the, the point is, is that in these types of medical equipment, you want true signals. Sure. Yeah, of course, other areas, of course, are, you know, handheld test measurement type solutions. You want to look at, hey, I'm, I want to see what am I measuring versus what am I adding due to the analog digital converter. And we are, our goal is true signals coming out. Right. Okay. So when you're developing uh, with, with something like this, what are the kind of considerations that people need to think about when they're, when they're prototyping or, or designing the system? Right. And, and I like to say that Small is not always better in the, the devices themselves, and, but we have really, really, really small packages on our Delta Sigma ADCs. Um, we have, um, in one of the packages, we have a three millimeter by three millimeter, okay. what we call QFN package, mm -hmm. um, which is the smallest multi-channel device out there. And then we also have a, a single differential channel device that's in a two millimeter by two millimeter package. So these can fit into um, really tight space, mobile types, sure, mobile devices, and so on. But on the other hand, you know, if, I don't know about you, but you know, developing these small devices can be difficult. Yeah. And and so we also offer uh, TSSOP packages, and so uh, which are leaded devices. And that's right. why I say small is not always better yep. because I don't want to solder a, a QFN. <laughs> I'm sure there's people in the audience that know how to do it, and there, there's experts. I'm not there yet. Yep. Uh, so great. The TSOP is great for prototyping, also um, the TSOP or leaded packages might be good for a single, uh, single layer PCB where you really can't take advantage of the small size of the QFN or lead list devices. Right, okay, so we've gone through the development, uh, now we're in production, so we've captured this, this high fidelity data. How do we ensure that it is transmitted reliably and accurately every time? Right, and, and exactly. I mean, you get it in, it's in the analog digital converter, it's in the digital domain, we need to make sure we can use it in our host process or host computer. And we transmit it um, using SPI, and we have um, cyclic redundancy check, or a 16-bit CRC checking that's built into that channel. Um, and what this is really is that while we're sending the, the package of information, we also send the 16-bit CRC code down the stream. Yep. And by comparing the two, we can verify the, the validity and the confidence of that data. So, okay. hey, once you're at the signal level, going through the ADC, we want to make sure we're not, not adding distortion there. And now we want to make sure this transmission in or, or communication to your host processor is also very, very robust. Okay. Okay, so um, all good stuff. If, uh, if somebody wants to learn more about this and, de and develop a system, um, what kind of tools do we offer? What kind of support do we offer? Yeah, it, and, and so, you know, like I say, these are analog to digital converters, and in the digital domain, we need to use them. And, and you're usually going to use them with some sort of software at some level. Sure. And, and so we've have, um, we have software available for whatever level you need to to do. So if you're bringing this into a microcomputer uh, or an FPGA that's running Linux, we have Linux API for okay. you so that can communicate right from your Python code, if that's what you're writing, um, right in and, and gathering the data from the API um, for the Linux drivers. We also, maybe you're doing Arduino code or a 16 or an 8-bit microcontroller. We have Arduino code available on our API too. Okay. Um, we also have code examples for our other microcontrollers like a, a PIC 24F um, solution right. too. In addition to that, one of the things about these this code examples is that we've set it up so that you can really fully function or take advantage of the features and flexibility of our different analog digital converters. For example, in our Delta Sigma ADC, we have 
you know, power down modes. We have scan modes. Um, there's an internal oscillator that you can turn on or off. Maybe you don't need it. There's right. uh, internal voltage references you do. There's, you can set it up for multi-channel or, or you can set it up differential or single-ended um, features. All these features can be really helped to be implemented with our software API solutions that we put together. Okay. In addition to that, we also have evaluation boards that you can use to, to, to get the and, and check it out. And I usually think even during your development, you should probably always get one evaluation board because there's such a, a, a bunch of information that's there, you know, whether it's communication protocols or the board layout, you know, some examples that yep. are shown there. In fact, we just have one uh, that, uh, is, that we just released for our uh, MCP39XX family, which is monitoring a single phase power and current meter uh, okay. that you can set up and check it out. So for home project or something, <laughs> or <laughs> power monitoring, right. um, and so on. So. Interesting, so all, all kinds of good stuff to maybe just uh, accelerate the development cycle or yeah. reduce some of the risk in, in writing this code for yourself. That's right. Okay. That's right. All right, so we talked about in, in, in that last uh, bit, we were talking about transmitting the data to a micro. Um, what else? What else goes around these devices? What does that? What does that end-to-end -end system look like? Yeah, exactly. And so you have your you have your microcontroller, which is often the heart of the system. Analog to digital converters, I would say, is also a very important part of your signal chain. We also have a microchip. We have other types of devices. We have uh, voltage references that you can add on that can maybe allow you to use. We have digital analog converters. Maybe your system needs a digital analog converter in addition to the analog. The, the ADC. Yeah. Um, we also have digital potentiometers that you can communicate digitally and it can set a resistance. And these are great right. for um, great for calibration. Maybe your sensor needs some calibration from unit to unit. So okay. the digital potentiometers are also there too. And, if, and we have a really large portfolio of high performance amplifiers that can do signal conditioning of the signals going into the ADC. Sometimes, you know, your sensor can go right into the ADC, but sometimes you need some additional signal conditioning, and that's where these, these high performance amplifiers, low EMI solutions, off, low offset, um, variable gain type of operations are available. All right, great. Mark, thank you so much for that overview. Yep. At this point, let's go to Alia and see if there are any questions from the audience today. Yes, Eric, we do have a few questions. Um, I have received a question from YouTube, and that is, what advantages does the Sigma Delta ADC have over the SARS ADC? Yeah, and, and I would say that uh, we talked about, in the beginning, we talked about, hey, what frequency range it is. Um, the biggest thing that the Delta Sigma has is its resolution can be uh, okay. much greater. So when you need to get up to 24 bits of resolution, um, you, you, that's where the Delta the Sigma, Sigma Delta. really okay. really shines, um, is, is the resolution there. Okay. Thanks, Mark. Um, I have another question that we received via email, and that is, do you have available drivers for your ADC? That's right, we, we do, and so I, I did mention it too, and I, I want to reiterate it because I think it's good for Arduino. We have, a, we have, a, we have Arduino code, API. Mm -hmm. uh, you would think that's, a, I'd call that a driver. Also for our Linux, uh, uh, Linux-based solution, we have a Linux driver available for okay. our MCP356X family. Okay. Great, and um, another question for you is, do you see the movement of ADC design trending towards higher speed or focusing more on higher channel counts? Yeah, well, um, I'd say both. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, they, yep. they do it. I, I, and I would <coughs> say of the two, channel counts is, is probably the one that people are focused more on because there's more signals that people want to try to gather, bring right. into the microcontroller, bring eventually into uh, some sort of machine learning and you know big data okay. and getting more data. So more channels is definitely a push. But you know, uh, pushing and, and and acquiring higher frequency signals, this is also important too. I'm sure. But of the two, I'd say the higher channel count is probably the bigger one. Okay. Awesome. And another question I have for you is, what are the main ADC architectures offered by Microchip? Yeah, the two ones that we do, we have other ones, but the main ones are. Uh, what we call Delta Sigma modulus, is what I was talking about, and successive approximation register, SAR mm -hmm. ADCs. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you for that, as we mentioned here. Thank you, Mark. Well, those are all the questions I have for you today. 
And audience, if you have any additional questions or comments, you can email us at livestream at microchip.com. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow us on our social media platforms. Thank you. Back to you, Eric. Thanks, Leah. Thank you again, Mark. Thank you for having and me. And most of all, thank you to our audience for taking some time out of your day to uh, listen to this topic with us, listen to this discussion. Please visit us at microchip.com slash coffee break. There you can see our remaining episodes scheduled for this season. You can sign up for notifications and you can peruse our library of previously recorded episodes. So enjoy that and we'll see you next time. Thanks again.